Hey guys, Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. Um, there's arguments raging all over the internet right now, and uh, I'm not going to refutate any of them. What I'm going to do is attack the practice methodology that led to these arguments. Um, you have to have some way to set up your training. And if you just pick the newest and hottest thing that you're for or against, uh, you're going to have a very erratic level of uh, performance. You know, when I look at in a shooter, is I want an accurate, consistent, efficient, disciplined shooter. All those things must be manifest or you're probably not reaching it. So let's talk about you. What do you want? Well, the first thing that we do is we set a goal. All right. I think most people on this channel are more interested in personal protection, but it could be competition or it could be a bit of both, which means you're going to have to make some sacrifices on both sides. Okay. If for me in personal protection, there's three elements that I need to be superior at. Uh, watching John Korea's videos. I know these things will help me tremendously to prevail if I need to defend myself. All right? One is the decisional positions relative to the force necessary. That's a complicated sentence, but maybe I just need to draw to a low ready and keep my finger off the trigger and not put the muzzle on the target. I need to practice that. Maybe I need to draw to a retention position because he's within arm's length. I need to control the hand closest to the firearm. Maybe I'm in a compression position. All that I have to practice because that is a part of fighting. And we see that relatively often in the videos where you need to have different levels of extension and how much force you're going to use. So I can't just practice drawing all the time to the first shot. But I want to be really good at drawing to the first hit. All right, and that's really important. So there's a level of accuracy implied, but there's also a time limit. First person to get the first hit wins. So there's a time limit on that one. And then I want to be good at transitions. That means I'm going to either follow up on the same target, change to another target, or stop what I'm doing, because that is also a transition from action to stoppage, okay? You know, technique and speed are constantly being pushed to failure as an athlete, all right? Uh, people that tend to favor precision mechanics also tend to take too much time to execute, therefore it's not a valuable skill in real-time work. People that only work on speed tend to be incredibly sloppy with what they do, and it tends to fail at a certain level. So when you're practicing, you have to practice accuracy and precision and speed and efficiency. And that's what makes up deliberate practice. And I know you guys won't be able to read this. Uh, you know, I spend a lot of time crafting lessons plans, but I'm a Neanderthal when it comes to lighting. We're out in the rain today. Uh, it's me and a camera and it's a board and I don't have the great penmanship. So I apologize for that. Listen to it, take notes if you can. Deliberate practice has two, two training methodologies, accuracy and precision, speed and efficiency. Accuracy and precision falls into the marksmanship category. Can you hit the target? It also eliminates a long time period. We can do things for a longer time than we need to. We're not held to a, long, a very short time standard to do this sometimes, but there's still a time standard. It doesn't dissipate. You eventually have to shoot with the information available. So this becomes information rich. Speed and efficiency is how quickly can I do something with the minimum amount of effort? Maximum efficiency, minimum effort. That means that we're going to be trying to get rid of times. It also means that we're going to have to let go of a level of accuracy that we'd expect in this practice. If we combine these two, you don't do very well. You will just do the one that you favor more. And I think that's where most of the debates come from, is we tend to favor one over the other, and we don't want to practice the thing that we're not particularly good at, so we tend to in-state answer it, which means we come to a conclusion and then we put all the facts in to fit it. And that's not the way to come to a conclusion uh, in, in an infinite game like shooting. Okay? So things that fall under accuracy and precision, the test, 10 rounds in 10 seconds at 10 yards. All right. Now there's a time standard in that. There's a 10 second time standard, there's distance standard, there's an accuracy standard, so we have to perform for that. What would make me good at that? Well, if I do it as an advanced level, I'm doing a draw. So I may practice draw and firing two to a very precise target. Uh, then I may just practice longer strings, ones, twos, threes, fours, to make sure that I can hit that target. But I'd like to hit that target in the least amount of time that I need because the test tells us how long we can do it. It's 10 seconds. So I've got to be inside that. Now, if I'm practicing speed and efficiency, it's something like four aces that I did a video for uh, active self-protection extra. What that is, is draw and fire two, reload two. No tactical value, but things that are important, and I'm going to work on having a very good draw. I need a sub-second draw to be able to do the times that are required. I need to work on my reload. 
That needs to be minimum effort. Notice these are more administrative details, all right? I need to practice on being able to move at a, a speed and put several combinations together. So I'm gonna practice those in bits and pieces. Now, this is where people get confused, and I get, in a, I get this question a lot. If I practice speed and efficiency, then I'm just gonna draw my gun and shoot somebody. And if you spend too much time in this one, you are training yourself to have almost a, a reflexive action on the draw, all right? But that's because you're not training right. If you spend too much time in accuracy and precision, you're going to take forever to shoot, which means you may be getting hit while that's happening, which will ruin your concentration, I imagine. I haven't been shot, but I imagine that's gonna ruin your concentration for personal protection. If it's a competition, the other person's going to be doing more work while you're waiting. So this is too much information, this is too little time. What we've gotta do is we've got to pair these back and forth. So I like to fall on the accuracy precision, so I have to spend a little bit of time in precision work. Uh, there's going to be you know, three levels of comparison for people. Uh, I get it all the time on the camera. People look at me and they say, well, I'm either a better shooter than him, I'm an equal shooter to him, or I'm a worse shooter than him. And then that judges the value of what you should listen to. And that's not a really good way to go about coaching. Uh, most of the greater coaches in athletics were more B-level athletes. It's the observational skills and the external narrow focus on your performance that you want from a coach. It's not that he can outshoot you. Now, shooting skill is very important and work very hard on it. But don't always compare the source of information, whether you're better, equal, or, or worse than them, because you're, you may go off the tracks with that. Uh, there's some people that are extraordinarily good fighters that I would never go to for a lesson because they can't explain what they do, and they can't get it to me. So therefore, just being around them sometimes helps a little bit, but it's not enough to train them. You need to break your practice down into thirds. So the final third is performance mode, all right? And when we're in performance mode, the target or the task is going to dictate the pace that we're at. So if the target is large, I can shoot at a quicker pace. If the target is obscured, I may have to be more careful. If it's moving, I'll definitely have to time it appropriately to the task, okay? And that's immediate feedback. So in performance mode, what I'm looking for is immediate feedback from the activity. And the faster the feedback comes, the easier it is for me going to stay present. We're going to get feedback from vision and feel. If you ever draw on your gun and you know it's not quite right in your hand, if you continue to shoot and don't fix that, then what will happen? You're going to have a lot of errors. So the feel can be corrected. Vision tells us how fast to shoot, nothing else. Uh, I'm not a big fan of cadence. Of course, let's be honest. I can't count when I shoot. Uh, my, it just doesn't, my brain does not work that way. Uh, I always fire one more or one less. Uh, I get caught up in the counting itself. So uh, I may not be the best uh, you know, purveyor of this fact. But what we learned in fighting is you hit the target when it comes open. There's no cadence to it. It's the size of the target, how fast you can hit it. So we're going to work out a vision and feel. You need to be observer when you're in performance mode. Okay. And that means calling your shots. If you call your shots, that's going to be the best thing that you can do in shooting. Uh, that's going to give you the immediate feedback that you, you know. And that's how you know how fast or how slow. I know those aren't the right terms. They're not in vogue right now. But that's how you'll know what, what pace you're going to shoot at. Because the target will tell you and your sights will tell you. And that's how you get in performance mode. So when you go to the range to practice and you have these skills, practice your accuracy and precision separately. Practice your speed and efficiency separately. But before you leave the range, make sure that you spend some time in performance mode. Now, how much? It would seem to make sense maybe a third, a third, and a third. But the performance mode is the present skills and abilities that you have in each subsection. So I'd say it's 40% on marksmanship and accuracy, 40% on speed and efficiency, and then leave with a 20%. Now, what's a good way to do a performance drill? Well, pick something. Pick a test or set up a stage or set up a shooting problem and shoot it and be fully present, call your shots. If you weren't, you need to do it again. We wanna get into that being present to performing mode before we leave the range. Same thing with dry practice. Uh, horrible habits are formed on both sides of accuracy, precision, speed, and efficiency if you just stay in that. And then you spend so much time in it, you're going to wanna to defend it because it's calling, it puts pressure on you to change your mind. All right, and it's better, it's easier for us to defend against something sometimes than it is to change. But if we have a good methodology to train, it's going to allow us to know that we can do everything we need to for the task at hand. Final thing is, I would video yourself. 
All right. If you're worried that you're getting your finger on the trigger too soon or that your muzzle's not under control, put yourself in front of the camera, put it on slow motion and check it. Uh, we all make mistakes no matter how good we feel about it. So let's hold ourselves accountable to a higher standard. That's also a part of performance mode. So when I shoot a test or whatever, I film it and then I go back and look at my performance and then I plug that into the two modes of deliberate practice, which is speed and, or accuracy and precision, speed and efficiency, which everyone needs to be worked on. Now, recently I made a decision. Um, since I come out of a precision background and my, my mind goes towards that, as you can tell with my words and the way I set up the videos, is I want to be precise in what I say, it tends to show up in my shooting. So I decided I really needed to work on speed and efficiency. And I made that a large majority of my practice. All right. I'm, I'm really working hard. I'd like to earn Scott Jelinski's black belt uh, patch. I'm an endorsed instructor. It's, it's, it's on it. Uh, since I AI for him, I shoot it cold, which makes it exceptionally hard because it's 100% accuracy, 100% time standards. So I've been working hard on the efficiency side of it because that's where I tend to struggle. Now, I went to primary and secondary to train, which was a great training event. The large majority of my, my classes were geared more towards accuracy and precision than I took. And what I recognized is that I hadn't paid enough, enough attention to that. So therefore, it had suffered. And when I came home, what I did is simply rebalanced my training methodology and made sure that I started the practice with accuracy and precision. So, you know, 10 shots, really feeling the trigger, watching the sights, uh, do it with the primary hand, do it with support hand, really get in the mode, do a drill with it, make sure I practice something that does that, work on my shooting, and then it, it came right back. It took me about two or three weeks, which is a very quick change because it already existed. I had just kind of ignored it. And then it brought my speed and efficiency back into a better place too, because they're always doing this. I had a great coach who's no longer with us, but he said, your speed and technique are always in direct competition with each other. And that's how you know if you're progressing, because if you get too fast, your technique falls off, All right? But if you get too technical, it takes you too long to execute things. And there's too much minutia involved in execution. So you can't check it. Here's the problem with all this. We end up in an in-stage coaching result. What is the end of the activity? What was the time? And then everybody works their way backwards. That is a very bad habit in coaching, all right? You wanna start at the beginning state. Since personal protection is fairly infinite game and has many starting options, I need to be able to start from many different places. And what I really need to do is manage the flow of the movement until I get to the end state and execution. So flow to execution is really important. We're going to do that by practicing both in deliberate practice and then we're going to check it in performance. Uh, I highly recommend that you compete. Uh, go to a competition, even as a personal protection people. Don't buttress yourself and say you're never gonna win. That's not what I'm saying to do when you get there. I want you to go and shoot at the highest level that you can and see where your skills are. You don't have to do it often. Once a month, once every two months will give you a good check. And then that gives you the failures points to come back and plug into your practice. I went to primary and secondary, I felt failure, and it motivated me to practice, and the end result was it improved both categories overall. All right, so now you know how to start this. Pick your goals, okay? Plug it into what you wanna do. Pick the three elements that are essential to the goal that you've chosen, all right? Practice the deliberate practice methodology where you're either in accuracy and precision, speed and efficiency. Check that through performance training, okay? Have a check at the end and then have something where you go shoot a class that has a qualifier or a test in it. Go shoot a, a match. Just get together with your buddies and shoot against each other so that you have some sort of way to check your performance level. Video yourself, check it, and I'm gonna tell you guys, you're going to be a very good shooter overall. Now, it's easier to pick one side and really push that, but you're going to have a huge weakness that'll get exposed somewhere, all right? And the people that are the best at this tend to do all the categories good enough. Not perfect, but good enough because we're gonna recognize patterns. That's what our brain does. We're going to execute in the time allowed for us with the size of the target. And that tells us how fast we can do it. Get some immediate feedback. Faster you get the feedback, quicker you'll correct this. All right, I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. And as always, measure, refine, and perform.